Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 7.3 one tail test. 7.3 represents chapter 7, section 3 of the Pearson A level Master Applied Master 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. I'm going to start by explaining the step by step method of hypothesis test. Step number one, state the test statistic. Step number two, state the distribution for x. Step number three, state the null and alternative hypothesis. Step number four, find the probability and compare it with the significance level. And finally, step number five, state the conclusion in context. Right, if the probability calculated is less than the significance level, this implies that reject H0, accept H1. If the calculated probability is more than the significance level, this implies that accept H0, reject H1. Critical region. If the observed value falls in the critical region, reject H0 and accept H1. Otherwise, accept H0 and reject H1. These are the key facts of 7.3 one tail test. I'm going to be implementing these key facts within exam style questions. Here is exam style question 1. A dice used in playing a board game is suspected of not giving the number 6 often enough. During a particular game, it was rolled 12 times and only one 6 appeared. Does this represent significant evidence at the 5% level of significance that the probability of a 6 on this dice is less than 1 over 6? Right, now I'm going to go through the hypothesis testing step by step. So step number 1, we're going to state the test statistic. So let x be the test statistic. So in this scenario, x is the number of sixes rolled uh, from a sample of 12 rolls. Okay, so that there is the test statistic. Moving on to step number two. State the distribution for x. So we know that x takes on a binomial distribution. We have 12 trials because we rolled the dice 12 times and we have a fixed probability p. So the probability P of rolling a 6, we are assuming it to be 1 over 6. So that there is the distribution for X. Step number 3, we have to state the null and alternative hypothesis. Let's start off with the null hypothesis, which is H0. This is what we assume to be correct. So we're assuming that the probability P of getting a 6 is 1 over 6. H1 is the alternative hypothesis. This is what we are trying to test. Now... <clears throat> We are trying to test if the probability of getting a 6 on this dice is less than 1 over 6. So in H1, the proportion P has to be less than 1 over 6. That is the end of step number 3. Step number 4, find the probability and compare it with the significance level. So here is step number 4. We've got probability, capital X, right? So we go back to the inequality in H1, it says less than. So over here we put less than or equal to. Right, from a sample of 12 rolls... Only one six appeared, so the observed value is one. So we've got probability x is less than or equal to one. We're going to calculate this probability using the binomial CD function in our class with calculator. So if I use the binomial CD function, I get that this probability is equal to 0 0.3813. Right, so I'm going to compare this with the significance level. It is more then the significance level, which is 5%, in other words, 0 0.05. Okay, so for this reason, we're going to accept H0, but reject H1. So we are rejecting the claim that the proportion P has decreased. So there is insufficient evidence. That is what we have to include in our conclusion. So step number five, we write down a conclusion. We put down there is insufficient evidence at the 5% significance level that the probability if you don't know how to write a proper conclusion just copy what you have in the question the probability of a 6 on this dice is less than 1 over 6. Use that as part of your template, right? So that is your conclusion. Probability of a 6 on this dice is less than 1 over 6. And that completes exam style question 1. 
Moving on to exam style question two. From the large data set, the likelihood of a day with zero or trace amounts of rain in Hearn in June 1987 was 0.5. Poppy believes that the likelihood of a rain-free day in 2015 has increased. In June 2015 in Hearn, 21 days were observed as having zero or trace amounts of rain. Using a 5% level of significance, test whether or not there is evidence to support Poppy's claim. Let's go through the solution step by step. So step number one, let x be the test statistic. So x is equal the number of days in June 2015 having zero or trace amounts of rate. That is the test statistic. Moving on to step number two. So in step number two, we have to write down the distribution for x. So x takes on a binomial distribution with 30 trials. In June, we're looking at 30 days and fixed probability p, where p is equal to 0 0.5. From the large data set, the likelihood of a day with zero or trace amounts of rain in Hearn in June 1987 was 0 0.5. That is the end of step number two. Moving on to step number three, We've got the null hypothesis and we've got the alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is what we are assuming to be correct. The likelihood of a day with zero or trace amounts of rain in Hearn in June 1987 was 0.5. That's our assumption. So P is equal 0.5. For the alternative hypothesis, we are trying to test something. So let's have a look at the wording of the question. Poppy believes that the likelihood of a rain-free day in 2015 has increased. So the proportion P has increased. So in H1, we've got P is greater than 0 0.5. That is the end of step number three. Step number four, we are trying to calculate a certain probability. We've got X. Now in H1, the inequality used is greater than. So over here, we put down greater than or equal to our observed value. In June 2015, in Hearn, 21 days were observed as having zero or trace amounts of rate. So the observed value is 21. We calculate this probability using our calculator. We can't use the binomial CD function as of yet because we've got greater than or equal to. We must rewrite this in terms of less than or equal to. So this probability is equivalent to writing one minus probability x is less than or equal to 20. So now we can actually use the binomial CD function to calculate this particular probability. So if I use the binomial CD function, I get that this probability is equal to 0 0.9786. So I do one takeaway that, this gives me 0 0.0214, which is less than the significance level, 0 0.05. Okay, so for that reason, we have to reject H0, but accept H1. Since we are accepting H1, we are accepting the increase in the proportion P. So in our conclusion, we're going to write there is sufficient evidence. So step number five, the conclusion in context, there is sufficient evidence at the 5% significance level That, copy the wording in the question, there is evidence to support Poppy's claim and that claim is that likelihood of a rain-free day in 2015 has increased. That the likelihood of a rain-free day in 2015 has increased. And that there completes exam style question two. Let's have a look at exam style question three. A polling organization claims that the support for a particular candidate is 35%. It is revealed that the candidate will pledge to support local charities if elected. The polling organization think that the level of support will go up as a result. It takes a new poll of 50 voters. Part A described the test statistic and state a suitable null and alternative hypothesis. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. 
let capital X be the test statistic. So X is equal the number of voters supporting the candidate from a sample of 50 voters. That there is their test statistic. Let's have a look at the null hypothesis. So H0. This is what we assume to be correct. A polling organisation claims that the support for a particular candidate is 35%. So we are assuming that P is equal 35%. In other words, 0 0.35. Let's have a look at the alternative hypothesis, H1. This is what we are trying to test. The polling organisation think that the level of support will go up as a result. So the proportion P in H1 has to go up, hence it will be greater than 0 0.35. So we've got the test statistic, we've got a suitable null and alternative hypothesis, hence this completes part A of the exam style question. Moving on to part B. Using a 5% level of significance, find the critical region for a test to check the belief. Let's have a look at the solution to part B. So we know that X takes on a binomial distribution. There are 50 voters, so 50 trials, and fixed probability P, where P is equal to 0 0.35. H0 represents P is equal to 0 0.35, and H1 represents P is greater than 0 0.35. This was explained in part A. Right, now, let C be the critical value. Since we've got greater than in H1, we're going to take the smallest value for C, the opposite. So C is the smallest value such that probability X is, we've got greater than here, so we put greater than or equal to here. Greater than or equal to C is less than the significance level, so 0 0.05. Right, so we've got n equal 50, and we know that p is equal 0 0.35. We can only use a binomial cumulative distribution function table for less than or equal to. So we have to rewrite this probability as 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1. This must be less than 0 0.05. Now I can take 1 to the right-hand side. So I've got minus probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1, which is less than minus 0 0.95. Divide both sides of the inequality by negative 1 will flip this less than 2 more than. So I've got probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1, which is greater than 0 0.95. Right, so now I'm going to show you how to use a binomial cumulative distribution function table with n equal 50 and p equal 0 0.35 to find the smallest value of c such that probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1 is greater than 0 0.95. For this question, we are looking at n equal 50 and p equals 0 0.35. So we are interested in this column here. We are trying to find the smallest value of c such that probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1 is greater than 0 0.95. Now, I'm going to skip a few probabilities and I'm going to move straight on to, for example, this probability here. 0.8813 is less than 0.95. This corresponds to lowercase x equal 21. Probability 0.9290 is less than 0.95. This corresponds to lowercase x equal 22. However, 0.9604, which is the next probability, is greater than 0.95. This corresponds to lowercase x equal 23. So, the lowercase x equal 23 is the c minus 1. So C minus 1 is equal to 23. This gives me C equal to 24. Ladies and gents, we know that lowercase x represents C minus 1, and we've used the binomial cumulative distribution function table to find the smallest value of C such that probability x is less than or equal to C minus 1 is greater than 0 0.95. We have seen that lowercase x is equal 23. This implies that c minus 1 is equal 23, so c is equal 24. Hence, the critical region is x is greater than or equal to 24. That there completes part b of the exam style question. Moving on to part c, the final part of the exam style question. 
In the new poll, 28 people are found to support the candidate. Comment on this observation in light of the critical region. So over here, ladies and gents, what we have is that lowercase x, the observed value is 28. We have 28 people supporting the candidate. Now, 28 is actually more than 24. Hence, um, x equal 28 is in the critical region x is greater than or equal to 24. So if we're in the critical region, we have to reject h0 and accept h1. So we're going to reject h0 but accept h1. Now we can write a conclusion. If we are accepting h1, we are accepting the increase in the proportion p. So p is more than 0 0.35. So we can write down there is sufficient evidence in our conclusion. So there is sufficient evidence at the 5% significance level that we can complete the conclusion by going back to the wording in the question. Uh, we've got the polling organization think that the level of support will go up as a result. So that the level of support for the candidate has increased. Okay, so that there completes exam study question three and this teaching video 7.3 one tail test. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.